I just didn't feel like people were trying, they didn't care. I just wanted people to see what you can do, you know, and I just wanted people to see that if you actually put the effort in, you get the results, you get the shot, you get the customers, you can make this hobby work. So as I went on, I realised I wanted to do more. I wanted to create a revolution, the Solly revolution. Hi, I'm Dale for Solly Revolution. This is our Turbocharge Your Tank series, Peak Performance. So in this, we're going to take you through all the tips and tricks we've picked up all of in our past. I'm often asked if I could do anything again, what would it be? This is a little look back into all of the tips and tricks I've picked up throughout the years to make your life and your aquarium the best it could possibly be. In our series are going to be lots of two minute videos and it would be as if I was looking back on my previous self trying to make all the advice that I've learned over the years into a short little video so you can follow at home. We're not going to charge for this service, it's completely free and it's a chance for you to absolutely, completely and utterly change your life. So we're now at the tank, so these are the three tanks we're going to be using. So we've got Concept 1, which is sort of like an established tank that needs a little bit of work. We've got tank two, which is just like a newbie starter tank, not a lot of stock in it. And we've got tank three on the end, which is just sort of just started out, a little bit of algae problems. But as we go through the program, we're going to switch between tanks so you can see how we progress on them. And also, hopefully, you'll be at one of these stages to sort of follow along and follow the progress of. So, what we're going to do first day is to make sure we've got a good reference point. We're going to give all the glass a good clean. All the rocks a bit of a clean of any algae, try and pull that out. You know, take some pictures and some video footage. Doesn't have to be great, just some video on your camera phone, something like that. Doesn't have to be a great quality. Just so you can see where your corals are gonna cut, start from and end at in the 31 days time. So, we're gonna start cleaning. We'll see you tomorrow when we actually start the challenge. Um, it's gonna be an exciting thing and you're gonna get to see lots of little things. But so, make sure you clean your glass, clean your tanks, and we'll see you tomorrow. Greetings Revolutionaries, I'm Dale for Site Revolution. Obviously it is day two of the Turbocharge Your Tank episode. So today, after we've taken all the pictures, the first thing to do is to check all our consumables. We normally do it the first of the month, but as we actually introduce the series, we'll do it today. So we're gonna go through all the carbon, the phosphate remover, polyfilter, filter walls, all that sort of stuff that you would normally do on the first weekend of the month. We're going to do it today um, and you can watch in the whole process. Right, so now it's time to change our consumables. Obviously it's first of the month so we're going to check our polyfiller. We're going to grab some carbon, grab some phosphate and grab some filter wall just round here. And we're going to go across to the tank now and we're going to install them. Make sure you give the carbon a good wash before we use it. So I'll do that and I'll meet you at the tank. So we're now at the sump of the tank so we're now going to change our carbon which is here, already been washed. Obviously we leave the old one in, just so you get the denitrifying bacteria to help you out. And then, phosphate remover, new bag there, so that just goes in. Lay that on top. We're also going to check our polyfiller, hasn't it expired. So if you have a look, you can see, look, still a little bit of life in that yet. So we'll leave that in. And now we're just going to change our filter wall, which will stop everything getting to the biohooler, which runs the solid revolution system. And it's as simple as that today. So if you do all that, that ends today's one, and then we'll go back to tomorrow where James is going to do a rescape. <music> Greetings, revolutionaries. I'm Dale for Solid Revolution. So today we're going to do a little bit of a rescape on one of the tanks. It's something that if you aren't happy with a little bit of your tank, you should just consider doing. It's not going to take you very long. It shouldn't take you longer than a couple of minutes. And we don't, we're not looking for a full tank rescape. We're just looking to improve an area that you aren't really happy with, or the cobbles aren't thriving, or just a bit more shelter for the fish. So, join us as we do a little bit of aquascape and hopefully you'll learn something, and you can see what we're going to do with the middle tank. Okay, so today we're going to have a look at rescaping this tank to improve the flow patterns within the tank and make it a better space for the fish and the corals. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start with some nice chunky boulders, and we're going to put a few of those in, and then build the rest of the scape off that. Once the boulders are in, they'll form a key part of the scape. The rest of the scape is going to be mainly uh, built up with plating real reef rock off the boulders. We're going to use some of the larger plates to form a background to the tank to add a greater illusion of depth to the slab.
Whenever scoping a tank, you'll often find that there's one or two rocks which just don't fit in well with the scope. It's always best to take around 10% of the rocks that are the least useful for your scope and just not use those. It's better than ruining a good scape by trying to squeeze in rocks that don't really work with what you're doing. Greetings revolutionaries, I'm Dale for Sonic Revolution. So today we're going to feed our corals um, in the tank, so you're going to see how that works. We're going to be using our own product, which is uh, Coral Pro 1. So that's the amino acids, and we'll use that as a pre-feed. Then we're going to use a specific food depending on the corals that we have in the tank. So you'll see all of that go up go on, you'll see how easy the system is to use and you can see the feeding response in the coals. So we're now at the tank, we're, today we're going to feed concept one, um, obviously it's coal for a one first. So we turn the pumps off, obviously we've left the lights on white, normally you would turn them down. This is a new bottle so it's going to take a couple of pumps to get some, there you go. Just one square, 100 litres. So we'll leave that to go around now for about 20 minutes, then we'll come back and we'll feed the coals. So I'll see you in 20 minutes. So it's now 20 minutes later, we're now back, as you can see the coals are starting to extend. So obviously this is a soft tank, we're going to use coal, pro, uh, coal food number 4, the soft one. So all we do is one squirt 100 litres again, obviously this is a new bottle so it's going to take a couple, there you go, just one squirt there, one squirt there. We'll leave that to go round and round the tank, all the coals will feed, it's that easy, it's broadcasting. Remember just to lock it, you just give it a squirt down and then twist the lid, lock that food back down and that's it. So, we're now going to let the fox coals feed. That will really help with their growth, the coloration, everything like that. So it's important you try and do that once a week. We always do it for water change day, so any excess food is taken out. So tomorrow, we're going to get in there, we're going to do the water change on the sump. It'll be dead easy to do. Um, we're going to show you how to do it. So we'll do that, and then there's a bit of footage of them just feeding now. So I'll leave you with that. Okay, bye. Greetings everyone, so today's a big one. This is the day we're going to do our water change. Something you should be doing weekly anyway, and we're going to show you how easy it is to do on our systems. Uh, hopefully you're going to learn something and you'll see immediate results when you do a water change. So it's something you all should be doing weekly. And let's take you to the tank and show you how quick we can do it. Right, so now we're here at the tanks. So today's water change day, it's Saturday. So we're going to get out of the way nice and quick. Normally in the shop, because we do so many water changes, we do about 3,000 litres a week. We tend to do it all by hoses, but today just to show you at home different ways to do it, we're going to do it the way that most of you probably do it. So we've got a nice nice long hose, we've got a little bucket which we'll see down here, and we're just going to siphon it out. It's just one bucket because it's a really small tank, 10% we aim for. So we'll drain it out, we'll fill it back up, we'll turn the pump back on, and we're ready then for tomorrow for the livestock purchase. Just refreshes that tank, make sure you keep all them nutrients that you need, all of them trace elements from the salt for the coals, and just a really, really good way of spending some time with your tank, have a good look, if there's anything that needs siphoning, etc. we can get that out at the same time. So, I'm now gonna do the drain. I'll be back in a second to top back up. Right, so we've now got rid of the wastewater. We've now added the water to the sump, which is underneath the tanks. We're now going to turn the pumps on and it will blend nicely back between the three tanks. <music> Greetings revolutionaries, today is the most important day of the year, it's my birthday, so I've got a little beer. Um, we're now going to go and purchase some livestock from the shop, obviously I'm just going to go around the shop, as it's my birthday, going to take way too much. It's just going to be absolutely awesome. So let's go around, let's pick up some really nice stock and make it a great birthday for me and treat myself to a few things for the tag. So obviously today's my birthday, it's livestock purchase day, a Sunday. So we're going to go down here, pick some coals out for concept tank three. So if you follow me, we're going to go all the way down and we're going for this star pull up here. If you can get that over the top. And we're going for this rock here, which is some zoas and some mushrooms. I'll pick that up, it's now just closed up a little bit. We're also going to go for some fish. We're going to go for the, some azure damsels over there, which James is going to catch. We normally have five, but as it's my birthday, going to put ten in. So we'll see you over the concept tanks in a minute. We'll all put the coals in, and James is going to catch the fish.
Look at that, like a pro. There's ten in it. In one swipe. Greetings everyone, so today we're going to do a little job that you probably don't need to do that often, but it's worth just doing it every so often. So we're going to check the level and depth of our sands in the tank, uh, make sure they're nice and clean, and if they're not, we're going to show you a few techniques that will help improve them, maybe add some clean up crew, do a few things like that, some fish that you could add, and just make that sand look absolutely amazing. The better your sand look, the better the tanks look. It's one of them things, you're only as good as your worst point, so don't let your sand let you down. It's a really important, important part of your filtration. So it's something that you definitely need to keep an eye on. So we're going to take you through and me and James will show you a little bit on how we can look at the depths and what we can do to improve it. Okay, so today we're going to have a little look at the sand that we use. It's very important with sand to use a very fine grain. Um, we use the uh, live Bahama here from uh, Carib Sea. You can see that, it's a very fine sand. Um, and that even in tanks with fairly heavy flow, it will stay in place reasonably well. Now the depth of sand you want is between an inch and an inch and a quarter, which is a rough guide, is it's just over the knuckle joint of your thumb there. So if you put your, foot, your thumb into the tank, the sand should just cover that distance from there to there. Any deeper than that, and you can get gases build up underneath. Any shallower than that, and you won't get very good denitrification. So the sand should be deep enough to just cover the knuckle joint of your thumb there, just like that. And you want to check that all over the tank to make sure it's all around the same kind of depth. Okay, so this is the sand that we use in store. It's Carib Sea Bahama sand. It's a very fine sand and it has a nice pleasing white colour as well. Greetings revolutionaries. So today something that we should all do in the hobby. We probably don't do enough. Um, it's testing, so we're going to test our water. It's going to be, we're going to make sure that we're fully up to date with all our tests, show you where we are with the levels in the tank. It's also a good way of making sure that the tank is improving, or at least staying the same if you're really happy with how your tank is. It's a good way of checking without just relying on your eye and make sure there's nothing in the background that's going on that you haven't noticed. So, we're going to show you a few tests that we do. As you know, some of the tests are free in store if you come in, so it's make sure you, when you come and bring your water or buy your water or purchase your livestock, bring a little water sample in and we can help you out. And we're going to show you how simple it is to do at home if you're not near the store. In your home reef aquarium, there's lots of things that you can test for, but primarily there's four things which you want to test for and priority to everything else. The most important of which, which is often neglected, is temperature. You want to be running between 26C and 28C, and preferably through a temperature controller. Also, you want to be using a refractometer to check the salinity, and that wants to be kept between 34 and 34 and a half, really. You can run up to 35 if you've got very good control, but it's very important that it stays under 35 or on 35 without going over. The other two parameters to check for are nitrate and phosphate. Phosphate is particularly important because a lot of phosphate will generate a lot of algae which means will work for you and it will also interfere with the way your hard corals lay down calcium and it will affect their growth and their ability to repair damage. Nitrates tend to accumulate in the aquarium over time. Now we can use live bacteria like our revolution and that will eat them and get rid of them. Otherwise you're doing it with water changes, macroalgae and various things like that. Um, personally we rely on live bacteria to do it and a good water change regime. Most of the other water parameters in, in the tank, unless you've got quite a lot of hard coral, you don't really need to worry about too much. A good water change regime will take care of all those minor trace elements and also maintain levels of calcium, alpha, and mag where they should be. Dosing of calcium, alpha, and mag should only ever be done to replace usage. If you are going to start testing and dosing calcium, alpha, and mag, make sure you have a good understanding of the subject first. When you affect all to one of those levels, it can affect the other two. So you need to have a good understanding of the chemistry involved before bothering to dose it. And for most people, unless you've got a lot of hard coral, you'll never need to do so. Greetings revolutionaries. So today we're going to get our hands right involved with the tank. We're going to go in and do one of them jobs that, you know, we all want to put off. And it's just going to be a little bit of hand algae removal. So we're going to get in all the nooks and crannies, somewhere where maybe your snails aren't getting or your fish aren't getting. 
and just help your yeah, tank out by removing a little bit of algae. It'll also really help you to know where you've got any problems or issues maybe sprouting from or you've got any rogue sort of um, algae's in there that you weren't sure that you had. So we're going to get our hands in, get really close and personal with it and really try and make that sort of add that little 5% improvement which will make an overall massive difference to your tank. So today we're going to do one of them jobs that a lot of people put off and that's just going to be manual algae removal. So sometimes, like we have in this tank, we've accidentally introduced some macro algae. It's grown a little bit too much, more than we wanted it to. So we're going to just manually remove it. It's one of them jobs that you could probably do once every month or so or as required. We're just going to get our hands in the tank, pull some out and just see what the difference that's going to make. Revolutionaries, so today is episode 10. This is the one where we're going to look at flow in a tank. Anyone who's ever watched our live videos on a Monday or James when he does his fish ones on Facebook will absolutely know how much we love flow and how important it is. So today we're going to take you through what flow is, how it works in the tank and then maybe reposition some power heads and just show you the effects it'll have on some corals just so you can get a visual idea of how things might work or not, not work in your tank. The flow is really important in removing any sort of waste toxins from around your corals and really improve the growth. Obviously you don't want to put too much on other corals, so it's really a difficult balance and you have to use your sort of reef as instinct there. Um, but we'll pass on what we know and hopefully you can make that really small change and just keep improving that tank throughout the month as we're trying to do every day. So today we're going to talk about flow. So as you saw, all the flow in these concepts are controlled by the pumps, our return pumps. So then each tank has two nozzles that come out and that equally spurts the water between them so it spins nicely in the tank. In your home tank you might have to have a small power head and sometimes as we get these tanks full we have to add a small power head just to increase that water circulation. And water circulation or flow is really important because it keeps all the detritus up in the water column. It also keeps all your food suspended, it makes the fish work a little bit harder to keep that body mass on and keep that muscle up. It also can help your corals grow faster and also sometimes mean that you can put more corals in. So it's a really important thing and it's a, quite a difficult subject to explain but all I would say is just keep looking at your coals each day and if you make any changes to any of your flow patterns make sure you just have a look and as they grow that all your coals are getting a little bit of circulation. Something to really keep on top of and it'll make a massive difference to your tank. So when you go home tonight or you're looking at your tank just make sure that you're seeing that nice spinning water, you're seeing it all go around the tank and there's isn't a dead spot for all your flake build up etc. And then you'll just be absolutely fine if you can keep that water in suspension and moving. That'll just make your tank so much better. <music> Greetings, revolutionaries. I'm Dale from Solid Revolution. So we're back round to feeding corals again. So of course we're going to be using Coral Pro One. We're then going to chuck in a little bit of a treat this time. We're going to chuck in some frozen, and we're also going to use some of our own coral foods. And just so you can see the difference uh, and the way they work and they flow around the tank. And then what we'll do is we'll show you the before and after and we'll try and get some really nice macro shots of the cobbles feeding just so you can appreciate what, what goes on and the effects and the benefits that you'll have for throughout. So we're now at the concept tanks. Obviously we're going to feed cobbles today. We're feeding coral tank uh, concept number one. Um, we're just going to show you what to do. Um, obviously first things first, coral pro number one needs to go in. Put it in 20 minutes before. Obviously we normally have the light off but you guys aren't going to see us filming. We're then going to feed cold food number four and we're going to feed some frozen cyclops today just so we can have something different. So, squirt that in, one, two, three. It's one squirt 100 litres, obviously, guys. And that's it. So we'll wait 20 minutes for that to go around, and then we'll come back and feed the corals. Right, so we're now at the freezer. So today we're going to do a bit of cyclops food. And all we do is we get some water. We've got a pipette ready, and we'll just pop a couple of cubes in there. And we'll let them defrost while the aminos are going around the other tank. And then we'll go back there, and we'll feed them with the soft coral food number four. So, obviously it's now been 20 minutes, the corals are now starting to open up, um, ready for feeding. So we're going to go coral food number four, that's our soft coral food. Remember, one squirt 100 litres like all our products are. So we'll just give that a nice squirt in there, nice liberal squirt. Obviously we've got the power head off and the pumps off at the minute. That's just so you guys can see us film a bit easier. In time that will broadcast feed round. We're also, we're just going to lock that off. We're also now going to just grab some cyclops and we're going to go around the tank and feed some corals individually. 
And Cyclops is a great food for that, just because uh, it's a really small particle. So if you just go in, you just get around there, just gently brush it over them. And I'll just take that all in nicely. And as we turn the flow back on, they'll all get the rest of that, and all the fish can also eat the rest that's in there. So that's it, so we'll be back tomorrow. Tomorrow is obviously water change day and we're going to show you how we normally do them in the shop rather than with a siphon tube so you might be able to learn something how easy we make 3,000 litres look. Greetings revolutionaries, so we're back round again to water change day. So it's going to be a nice 10% again. We're going to also change our filter wall and just check the polyfilter probably hasn't expired but let's just check it we're in there anyway and just make sure that everything's running really nice in the sun so it's going to be a nice quick one we're going to hopefully just bomb through this water change you'll see us how quick and easy it is to do and then you can do yours at home and we can get ready for the tomorrow which is the exciting day where we go and purchase livestock right so it's water change day today obviously we're going to show you how we do it different how we did it last time so we've already pumped our water out so when we do a water change, all of ours is already pumped out. We can pump out the water straight out down the drain. So it's really easy. Not going to show you that part because it literally all was with us flicking on a pump. We've also changed the filter wall already down here in the sun. Um, so now it's time to top it back up. And that's all we do here. So we've got this. This has got a tap on it. We just go down here to turn the pump on. So this just pressurises the whole system in the shop. We've got loads of these taps about, so if you want to do water changes just anywhere, just turn this on. And that's it. So we just leave that to run now. And that does that. We do our revolution dosing. Obviously, we use the big bottles here. We're not going to use the little ones because we do the whole shop at the same time. So for us, it's just two caps on this one. One. So if you can't overdose it, so it doesn't really matter. We'll just leave that to finish up doing the water change, and once we get to the level we need, we'll turn that off. And it's as simple as that. So if you're not doing a pump water change or anything, it's something I'd definitely look into. Um, it just makes your life so easy. You can see we do 3,000 litres a week here, um, and it's just so easy because we're not lifting water. It's something I'd definitely look worth investing in. If you want to, by all means, come to the shop and we'll talk you through it. Greetings revolutionaries, somehow we're all right around to episode 13. So it's back to purchasing. Obviously last time we did the purchasing was for my birthday, so we went a bit crazy. We'll probably go a little bit less this time. Um, so we're going to show you a few things around the shop. Going to add a little few tweaks to the tanks, maybe chuck a few odd little fish in there, just so you can see. And then what we'll do is we'll film all that, and then you can see how we're starting to move the tank forward. It's, it's a Sunday, make sure you go out, purchase something from a really good LFS or ourselves and just really enjoy your tank and treat yourself. So today is obviously purchased livestock. Um, you saw earlier in the series we did concept two, so that was the one that James escaped. So we're now gonna start introducing a small amount of cleanup crew. Now we could do them a lot quicker, but because we like to show people sort of a three month cycle on the concept tanks, we'll do that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get a conch in there. If you haven't got a conch, you're absolutely fantastic keeping your sand clear. Um, we're going to go for a concha. We'd normally get too big for that size tank, but as it's only going to be a temporary thing, we can get away with it. We're going to go for a tiger conch, which is this guy down here. So have a look, we'll bag him up, then we'll show you how to acclimatise him and get him into the tank. Right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to acclimatise the conch. Now there's many ways you can do it. The easiest way we've found is you get a pair of scissors, you get the thinnest side, so that side, and you pierce four holes in it. So you just go, you go about an inch in, like that, like that, and then round the other side, we do the same. Be careful not to get the livestock, obviously. Then we put that in there, and now the water will slowly just change and uh, equalise over the next couple of hours, and then we'll release it, and we'll come back and release it. Right, so it's now time to release it, so we're just going to take the elastic band off. Be careful that it doesn't cling into the water. So all we do is just get across the water, lean it down nicely, right to the bottom, 
Okay, so make sure he stays the right way up. And there we go. As you can see, he's already moving around the tank, nice and happy. And he'll do a fantastic job of keeping that, that nice and clean for us going forward. Greetings revolutionaries, it's day off the Sonic Revolution, so it's day 14 now. Obviously from the purchase we made yesterday, you can see in the tanks now, um, what you're going to see is some of the sand was disturbed, and because of that we're going to add our water clear. For you, those of you that don't know what water clear is, it's basically a foculant that will bind all the particles together so it gets trapped in our filter wall. It'll really add to our tank and make it crystal clear, so it'll really improve it. It's a really nice simple job to do. It's going to be a couple of squirts and that's it and then let wait, wait half an hour and see the results so really easy one to do today and it'll make a massive difference to your tank so obviously with the tanks today um, what we're going to do is we're going to do our water clear dose so if you're not using that it's a clarifier it will it collects all the bits in the water and it's foculent collects them all together they're all going to get caught in our filter wool it's really important to use a good filter wool like ours you know something really fine to collect it all of course like all our products one squirt 100 litres so, just what you do, you give this new bottle, so it's going to take a sec, there you go, one in each. And then all we do is we'll just let the pumps go around, and in about 20-30 minutes time you'll start seeing it getting clearer and clearer. Sometimes, first time you use it, you might get a bit of haze. It's key not to overdose this, because it is really powerful stuff. So it's just one squat 100 litres. Um, once a week is normally enough, you can use it twice if you need to. But it'll just clear your water up, everyone wants crystal clear water and that's really going to change the appearance of your tank. So if it's something that you're not using, make sure you sort of add it to your um, maintenance regimen and it'll just improve it dramatically. Also obviously help all your light penetration and all of the other benefits you get from having the power heads on more because there's less bits in the water. So that's really it for today, a nice quick one. Only literally took what, 10-15 seconds you'd have to do it and that's it. So I'll see you tomorrow and we'll have to see what we're doing then. Greetings revolutionary, so we're now about halfway through our challenge, uh, it's now day 15, so what we're going to do is we're going to go out and look at the tanks, we're going to take some pictures and we'll compare where we were at the start and now, and then we'll see what we're going to do to achieve where we want to be in 31 days, uh, or 16 days from now, at the end of the challenge, So, and it's really important that you take these pictures so you can see what's improved in your tank, so you don't think all of these two minutes didn't add up for anything but all of these two minutes will add up to a massive change and by taking them pictures you're going to see all them improvements. So without any sort of more me talking, we're going to get straight over there, take the pictures and we'll get them up on the screen and we'll talk through them. Right, so we're now halfway through, or near enough halfway through. So what we're going to do today is we're going to take the pictures of all the tanks. Um, this is just to show us where we've come from in the last 15 days so you can just see that the things that you're doing are making an improvement. So, I'm going to go around, take the pictures, we'll slip them into this footage as we go around and you can start seeing how the tank's progressing. Obviously the middle one from when we started had nothing, so concept two, we had nothing now escaped and it's got the odd bit of cleanup crew in. Obviously tank one is now filling out nicely and we've removed some algae, so hopefully you'll see the difference there. And on the end we've obviously added the fish, so we'll take the pictures and you can see what, where we're at. revolutionary so it's now day 16. This is actually a job you should be doing all the time so it's feeding fish but we're just going to take you through some of the options that you can feed the fish that we've got in our tanks. Uh, hopefully you'll learn something and um, you'll see how little we feed in terms of regular little small feeds rather than one-off big feeds. Uh, it really helps your bacteria by doing that um, and hopefully you'll see that there's a, more, a greater variety of foods out there than what you were expecting. Um, so we're going to go across to the tank uh, me or James are probably going to have a little chat about the food and we'll just see how we get on. Okay, so today we're going to take a look at feeding fish and there's several things to bear in mind when you're feeding fish. One, make sure that you don't feed too little because obviously the fish will lose weight or overfeed to pollute the water. Also make sure that you feed a good quality of food and good variety mixed up a bit 
that the food is the right size for the fish that are involved and also that you're feeding often enough. In store we feed about eight times a day and at home you want to feed, be feeding at least twice a day on most species and on more difficult species you may need to feed as often as hourly. Um, and we, in store we do it all manually but on a home tank you can use an automatic feeder to feed flake and pellets throughout the day and also in store and at home you can put clams in the half shell in a tank and they will sit on the bottom and the shell will hold the food in place and a lot of fish can then pick at it all day long. You can also do that with seaweed in a clip as well. So we get, we have some uh, pyjama cardinals in this tank so we're going to give those a little feed of misers now. They get two feeds a day in here, one of misers and one of super shrimp typically. Okay, so for some fish with more specialised diets, such as the soap fish here, uh, live feeding is necessary. So on this one, we're going to see him there snapping up uh, live river shrimp. And these little feeder shrimps are really devoured. revolutionaries so today is actually a really quick job for you to do it's something that you should just check though um, even though we're in summer remember don't unplug your heaters um, they work on a thermostat but now is a perfect time to check that they are working if you haven't got a heating controller like what we run and we'll show you in a minute then it's definitely make sure that you check that your uh, heaters are calibrated and the temperature is not you know they're not staying on and gonna cook your fish eventually so we'll go through it, we'll show you how, what we would do to test them, uh, make sure they're clicking on, clicking off, and then we'll show you the heating controller, which is another stage you can add so you don't have to keep doing this stage throughout the, throughout the year. Right, so one of the jobs you should be doing every so often is checking your heaters. Um, it's really important, it's one of the most important parameters you have is temperature. We run our tanks at 28, which is a little bit higher than you'd probably see online, but a reason for that is actually coral reefs are a lot warmer than you believe, and sort of 26 comes from a lot from tropical heat tropical tanks where you know they traditionally stick at 24, 26. Um, the advantages run a bit higher, it obviously is better for the fish, it increases the metabolism, it increases your bacteria, and everything basically works a lot faster and better for you. Also on the hot days in the summer if we haven't got a chiller, there's going to be less of a swing because it's normally the swing that gets them rather than the temperature. So if you're not running at that temperature, slowly creep it up to that over the course of the next few weeks. Um, right, so if you aren't, then you check your heaters. Um, all you do on top is there is a thermostat on top that you can do, and you just make sure that it's reading correctly and it's flicking on when it needs to and flicking off. Heaters tend to stick on, and that's why we don't use heaters on their own. We use a heating controller, like this guy. We can take them off, he's on Velcro, so I can bring them through to you. We went ours at 20, 28, it's 27.9 at the minute, so the heaters are actually on. But to do it, you just set these up, they're super easy to use. They have an audio alarm, so if anything happens, we know. They can also control a fan, or a chiller if you like, in the future. Um, but yeah, if you haven't got one of these, make sure you get one. It's, it's one of the most important parameters you can have is temperature. That and salinity will sort out of a lot of your issues. So, if you haven't got one, go out and buy one. If you, are, if you definitely can't get one in, then make sure you check your uh, thermometers on your, on your, on your heaters and then you'll be absolutely fine going forward. It's a job that you don't have to do that often, but as we're doing it as part of the series, we will carry on doing it and we'll talk about these little jobs as we go through. Greetings revolutionary, so it's back round to feeding coals today. So we're gonna be using Coal Pro One, and then we're gonna be using a certain type of coal food depending on the coals in the tank, of course. Um, We'll try and get some really nice panda shots of the coals actually eating this week. So it'll be a really quick video for you, but make sure you do it. It improves your growth, improves your colour, improves everything, your health of all your coals. It's well worth doing. Make sure you do it and uh, see what we do and follow us. Oh, amazing, isn't it? Okay, so we're going to have a look at feeding corals today. So what I've done here is I've defrosted some cyclops and we're going to put a little squirt of number four in there. That's our soft coral food. You add well one squirt per 100 litres, so we can add that into there. Okay, I've actually put two squirts in because a little bit of extra food will help. 
we give that a little stir around in there. Now also to that we're going to add some Cold Pro 1. Now we've already put some of this into the tank 20 minutes before as a pre-feed and now we're also going to mix a little bit in with the food as well because you can't really overdo that so we'll have a couple of little squirts. Now once we give that a little stir and then just go around on the coals and gently squirt that on any of the coals that have the pollets open first because they'll be the ones that are most receptive to the food. You'll also see there's a little bit of misus in here um, that was already in the jugs, but some of the coals will take that as well. So we go around and anything with the polyps open you feed first, and then once you've done that, that should encourage the ones without that aren't open to then open up, and then you can go around and do those ones next. Now, you can just broadcast feed and put it into the tank, but if you do it this way you get a little bit less pollution, and the corals will generally take in a little bit more of the food, there'll be a little bit less to waste, and you can sure ensure any corals that are in a low flow area that might not get much food get their fair share. So now we recommend feeding corals at least twice a week, with at least one of those being a targeted feed in this way. But the more you feed, the faster the growth will get, as long as you can handle the resultant pollution of it. So if you want to get the best growth out of your corals, you can feed once or twice a day if you like. Um, although you may find that you burn a little bit more phosphate remover and have to do a little bit more water changes to compensate for that. And then once you've gone around and fed the most of that, there's quite a lot of food left on this one because I've got a few tanks to do, but then you just, any remaining food, you just pour that into the water and then once you've put the pump back on, that will spread that round. The fish will eat little bits and your cleanup crew will have a little bit as well. Greetings revolutionaries, so we're back round to Saturday, so it must mean that it's time for water change. So we're going to get on with doing the tank. Today we're going to do a little bit of siphoning in the tank, so it looks a little bit different to how we've done before. And do a little bit of work that we've been wanting to do in the tank. Um, perfect time to do it if you need to do anything is when you're doing your water change. So we'll do that, clean the glass up and then show you the, uh, the end result. So what you can do is after you've done your water change, or before, whichever way around you prefer to do it, just reach into your tank with your hand and give the sand a nice little stir. You'll see that it will get some sediment out of the sand. You might also find a few air bubbles come out. Now if they have a very eggy smell, these don't, this sounds pretty clean, but if you do find that there's an eggy smell, stop what you're doing and just do a little small area at a time so you don't release too much gases into the water at one time. Now once we've given that a little stir, you'll see there's a little bit of cloudiness there. So the next thing we're going to do is siphon some of that cloudy water into the sun through the filter wall so that we can get that sediment out before we change the wool. So bear with me and I will just start this siphon going. Okay, so we're now going to go around and this sediment rich water at the bottom here, we're going to siphon that into the sump through the floss. This will get a lot of accumulated sediment out of the water and if you do this every week you'll notice a dramatic difference in clarity in the tank within a very short period of time. Now you can, you can spend, if you leave the pump running you could do this indefinitely. Just to ensure that you're not siphoning water out faster than the pump is returning it. Okay, so now that we've siphoned some of the water from the tank through the filter wall in the sump, the next thing that we're going to do is take the filter wall out of the sump and change that out for fresh wool. So you should find the filter wall comes out quite easily. You can also use the filter wall inside a sock and that will make it a bit clearer than running the sock on its own. I'm just going to wring that out and move that into a bucket. Now we, we have our own brand of uh, filter wool which is very, very fine. So using that, we can uh, trap much finer particles than you'd normally be able to trap in wool. And it tears off quite easily if you tear it on the right side. So we're just going to tear that down there. Get a nice piece of wool and we're just going to roll that slightly. Like so, this will help it spring outwards and jam between the baffles better. And that wall now goes back down. Try and spread the wall out as best as you can so the water can't skip past it. 
But don't worry too much because as the wool starts to clog, the pressure will force it outwards a little bit better. And there we have it. Greetings everybody, so today is obviously Sunday, so today is the day you go out and you can purchase your livestock. So we're going to go around the store and we're going to actually buy some stuff in the store, pop it into the tanks and see how it improves it. Uh, we've got a little few little surprises in there for you today, some really nice coals going in. So hopefully when you go out today you'll spot something really nice and uh, something that'll improve your tank. Obviously if you can't come to us then make sure you go to a good LFS at Quantities of Livestock and you'll have no problems. Right then, so we'll go straight round the shop and see what we can find. Okay, so today we're going to get some more corals, and this time we're going to put them into concept tank too. So, the main ones I'm going to focus on today will be star polyps, of which we have about five or six colours in stock. We're going to get a selection of those and pop them into the tank so that you can see that it starts to form the beginnings of the reef. Star polyps like quite a lot of light and quite a lot of flow, so they will be predominantly placed on the higher areas of the tank. Greetings everyone, so today we're going to talk about one of them jobs that you don't have to do that often but it's well worth doing and that is check your refractometer. Obviously if you come to the store you're more than welcome we do it for free. If you're not we'll show you how to use a check solution, how to use, turn the screw and the way we do it. Also why we use salinity rather than SG um, because it's not affected by temperature and the reasons why. So we'll talk through all of that but it's, salinity is one of the most important things to keep stable because it keeps all your elements stable and keeps all your livestock really happy. So it's something that you should check, um, and we're just going to make sure you do it today, and it's a really quick job, only going to take a minute or so. So today we're talking about setting up our refractometer. Obviously salinity is one of the most important parameters that we have to keep an eye on that and temperature, it sorts out a lot of your issues. So what we're going to do is we're going to obviously use our refractometer to check our salinity, which we'll do in the tank. So all we do is we just get a small syringe off an old test kit, we just do a few drops along it, just make sure the entire glass is covered, squish it down, then you just get into a bright light which we've got here, and obviously we just check that and it is spot on 34. We always use the number on the right hand side because that's not affected by temperature, so it's something to make sure you do. So now that we know that's 34, we're just going to check that with a, a correction fluid, just make sure it is reading correct, and if not we'll go around and correct all the tanks in the shop. Right, so now what we're going to do is we're just going to check it, so you get your little correction fluid here, we check it on. This is a job that we do in store for free if you're nearby. Just bring it to us. Drop it on, like so. Put the lid back on that. Obviously we made sure we've wiped it and kept it nice and clean. Put that on there like so. We check that. Now if it wasn't correct, what we'd do, because this one's reading absolutely spot on, you would take this little off. You can see there's a little adjustment. There's a little screwdriver here you put in move left and right and you can move the line up and down and you hit the whatever your correction fluid is set to. We tend to always use a correction fluid rather than RO just because we can guarantee that it's going to be the right thing. There's what we use one by Salifer which we just divide up. But yeah, so it's as simple as that. It's a job that you should do each month and but it's well worth doing because if you have the correct salinity and the correct temperature it's going to make your life so much easier. So I'll see you tomorrow and we'll talk about another job. Greetings everyone, so now we're on obviously day 22. So what we're going to do today is we're going to actually clean all our glass up. Um, it's something that we did at the weekend but somehow we managed to get it a bit dirty. We're also going to show you how to use ATM Mirage on it. Um, it's a really fantastic product, it'll protect your tank uh, from fingerprints, splash marks etc. Something we hadn't done on them tanks and sort of showing you what, how we do it. It's something we use in store all the time. So what we thought we'd do is we'll have a go at it today, show you how easy it is to do it and how we do it in store because some people seem to like 
not quite get the concept of it that you have to build it up. So we'll show you what we do and the results we get and then we'll sort of show you a few test results at the end where we'll chuck some water over it and just prove it works. So today we're going to start cleaning the glass. Um, what we do is we, we always use a product called ATM Mirage. It's a non-toxic, completely safe product for cleaning your glass. So it's something I recommend you all do. People who use other window products like whatever the brand may be. A lot of them contain ammonia and can be quite toxic to your fish. So it's ensuring that you use a product made specifically for fish. Um, so what you do is, we've already mirrored these before, so this, it creates like a waxy layer that protects the, the tank. So all you have to do is give it a wipe with some water. And you can see how the water's just bouncing off the front. Just gets rid of any surface dirt there. Then you just get another dry bit. Let me just dry that off first. And we just use tissues, some people use microfiber cloths totally up to you what you prefer to use. So as you can see, because I've already mirraged it, it's drying off and repelling the water already. Hopefully the camera can pick that up. And then we get the mirage, which is this. Obviously we use a super sized bottle. At home you'd use a much smaller bottle. Um, and then you liberally spray it. Now first time you use it, what I would say to you guys is make, build up several layers, really thin. Make sure you buff out each layer each time because if not you get a streak underneath. But you'll build up that little bit of protection. So we, all we do is we just buff it in there with one bit of tissue. We just work it in. Just work it into all of the holes that you've got. Just keep buffing that away. Let's just flip the cloth over then and just keep working it in. Until there's none, nothing left. The first time you do this, you might end up with the odd little streak, but don't worry, all you do is just keep buffering it, and it goes. And the more you do it, the easier it gets, and you'll get quicker and quicker and quicker. We did a whole shop in it, which actually saved us loads of time because it stops all the splashes. So as you can see there now, there's not many streaks left at all on it. And that was what, a couple of minutes? So the first time you use it, you might have to do it. Um, obviously the product's available on the website or from all good fish shops, but definitely worth using. It protects from the risk of ammonia and anything else like that that might be in the other products. So make sure you do that and it'll protect you and it'll save you time on every water change you do. Simple as that. Greetings Revolution. So hopefully by now, we're now on day 23, you should be seeing loads of results in your tank if you've been following everything we're doing. Because of that, your results, because of all your revolution dosing and all your water changes, etc., we should have nice low levels. Um, if you're not, then you know you need to step it up and try and catch up with us. So what we're going to do is we're going to add our coral enhancer, and that is just adds the colour to all of our corals. It's something that's really important once we get down to the lower levels to really show off our corals. We add it once a week. It's once got 100 litres, like all our products. So it's really easy to use. But it's something that you should be adding once you get them levels down, just to really add in that last bit of 10% of colour to all your corals. It doesn't affect the corals in any way, except they're adding the colour, it doesn't affect their growth in any way, so it's just something that we'll do, and hopefully you'll see the results as well once we've done it, and we can show you maybe over the end, from the start to the end, how much I've improved. Right, so we're now above the tanks. Obviously today what we're going to do is, because we've got our nutrients nice and low, the revolution and run the biohula and the big water changes or consistent water changes that we do. Running our phosphate remover as we do, you know, removing our filter walls each week. Because we've done all that, we've actually created a nice successful area where we can feed the tanks and we can also now start adding colour enhancer. So what colour enhancer does is it's a, it's a product that will actually bring out the colours in all of your uh, corals and it's like all our products, one to about 100 litres. So make sure you don't overdose this product because it's a really powerful product. So obviously new bottle, so one, two, three, we'll put it in there because this is a 300 litre system. Well it's 350 so we'll give it one extra, give it a little screw, lock that in. Yeah, and now all we'll do is we'll let that go in and over the next few days it'll absorb in and it'll start bringing out them colours, especially anything with greens and reds in, um, so the soft coals, the, especially LPS, anything like your affiliates, etc. Um, track affiliates especially, especially for a nice big growth green, it'll really enhance that. So, fantastic little product if you're not using it. Once you've got your nutrients nice and low though, that's the key to this. Don't be using it if you've got a reading of say 20 nitrates, 50 nitrates. You know, you need to be under two really to really see the benefit of this product. 
But that's it guys, so hopefully by the time we finish this, you'll see that the, the colour enhancement, it does take a few weeks to work, but we've been doing it throughout, but we thought we'd show you it now, uh, towards the end of the cycle. So as you go on after this programme, continuing what we've learned, you'll see the benefit of it. And that's it. Greetings revolutionaries, I'm Dale for Sonic Revolution, so today's day 24. So what we're going to do today is we're going to clean up our heads. Um, it's something that obviously when we looked at flow a few, about a couple of weeks ago now, um, we were talking about positioning our power heads in certain ways. Um, so we're going to take them out, we're going to give our power heads a good clean, clean our return pumps as well, and you'll see a massive increase in sort of efficiency and the flow. So it's something that you definitely need to do. We'll take all the impellers out and show you all of that side clean any sponges if it's in the return pumps and we'll just go through all that process with you just so you can see the difference it makes. Something well worth doing because um, it'll just keep that efficiency of the pumps up and in time you know it just builds up and builds up. So it's a job to do, shouldn't take too long, a few minutes and we'll be done. So today what we're going to do is going to do one of them jobs that you should do. So some people say monthly, some people say free monthly depending on how clean your tank is and that is clean your power head. This is just a diddy little power head we sometimes use in the concepts. As you can see, this one's lovely and clean. But over the course of a few months, they just they tend to pick up some dirt and some algae, and it really affects their performance. So the way we do it is we take them out, we get a little toothbrush, give them a nice clean, put them in some water, let them run. Some people use white vinegar, some people use some specific products that you can get out there on the market. If you've got some coral and algae as well, you can get rid of that. But it makes such a difference to the flow of your tank. By increasing that flow and obviously making it more consistent, the more you clean it, the more consistent it will be because you want to have that drop off, then that increase, the better your tank will be. You know, corals crave consistency, same with fish, they like to be fed the same, so do the bacteria. So keeping everything consistent is a really key skill. So if you have got any power heads in your tank, make sure you give them a nice good clean. You'll be amazed on the difference it makes. You might even have to slightly angle them differently once you've done it because there'll be that much extra power. So if you go away and clean that, it's going to be about 5-10 minute jobs for most of you. Some of you might have to run in a bucket for an hour or two, but you can walk away and leave it. And then put it back in, let us know how you get on, and hopefully you'll see a massive improvement. Greetings revolutionaries, so today is obviously the day when we feed our corals. So we're going to also be getting the coral for a one out, and we're going to be getting our coral foods out. Today we're going to do it a little bit different than doing the broadcast feed. We're going to do some really specific target feeding and just show you about how the particle size works for each coal. So it's a little bit more in depth than what we've done before, but definitely worth looking at doing yourself if you've got a bit more time. So this video is going to be a little bit longer than normal, but hopefully you'll see all the coals feeding um, as we go around the pipette and it feed each individual head or polyp as we can. So we'll go straight over now and we'll get on with it. Right, so it's that time of the week again where we do our big coral feed. Because we've got the end of the month, we can do a bigger one because we're going to do a bigger water change. Obviously it's time for Coal Pro 1, the amino acid, so we'll get that squirt. Obviously we'll put three squirts in there. So we're now going to leave that for 20 minutes, let that go round. We're going to prep that coral food number four. I'm also going to prep some uh, little pellets because we've got some shrimps in there this time. Uh, those of you who have shrimps, I know that sometimes they get in the way when you feed. So I'm just going to show you a few little tips and tricks that we use and hopefully I'll get the shrimps out of the way so we can get on with feeding our corals. So what we're going to do is because we've got the shrimps in there now, we're going to use some Formula 1 marine pellets. You can use any pellets you like, those ones are meaty, and hopefully this will draw the shrimps away from the corals that we're about to feed. Now it'll take a little while obviously for the scent to get around, but hopefully once they see that they'll come. They've all, they have already been fed today so they might not be that hungry, um, but we'll see. Um, we'll leave them to just dissolve for a little bit, give the scent off, hopefully I'll get the shrimps away from the coals, and then we'll go on and we'll get our coal food four in, and we'll go around and we'll feed all these star polyps. So what we've done now is we've got a bit of coal food four, we've squirted that in, we've added a little bit of tank water just so it goes a bit further, we've got a big surface there. So all we're going to do now is just go around, 
just try and feed all these coals, just blow them over just nice and gently and work our way around the tank. And that's really it pretty much. So that'll be a nice big feed. Um, that'll hopefully bring them all nice and out, ready for the big water change we're going to do tomorrow. So I'll join you tomorrow, we're going to do the big 25% water change. Greetings revolutionaries, so today we're obviously Saturday, so we are on to water change day. As it's the end of the month, there's no more Saturdays left in this month, we tend to do our big water change, which is our 25%. The reason we do a 25% is just in case anything has gone astray throughout the month, it's a great way of resetting your tank. Um, not that it has in our case, but if it does, it's well worth doing. Also, it's a brilliant time to do any good maintenance that you've got to do, so obviously we're going to change our filter wall like we always do when we do our water change. But we might have a little vacuum out in the sump or something today because we've got that extra water to get rid of. Still, shouldn't be a long video because it's not going to take that long because we're going to show you how we've got it all set up. And uh, yeah, we'll top it up. And then obviously tomorrow when we look at the tank, I think you'll really see the improvements from the big water change using the quality salt, which is ATM hot sauce. Right, so today we're obviously going to do our big water change. Normally we do this the first weekend of the month, but because ours is obviously a 31 day program, we're not going to do that. So this is the one where you change all the consumables again. So your phosphate, your carbon, we check your polyfiller. So obviously we've already done that. You can see the two bag system we use. So we've left our old one in, the last one that we put in last month. Removed the old one and we laid the new one on top so you can see these are nice and fresh. We checked our polyfiller, which is absolutely fine. Still got a little bit of life in it. But our hula's all nice and clean, so we don't need to do anything with that. And we've replaced the filter wall as we do every week. Now the reason we do a big water change is just to reset everything. So if anything has gone over polluted or there's a trace element that's been down, that 25% water change just resets a lot of things. So by doing that, it just allows us to carry on. Like I said, normally we wouldn't do this until the first weekend of the month. And we always put a reminder up for you on the Friday before to make sure you get your consumables, get your big water change in. You can also use this time to do any jobs that you need to do in the tank. So if you need to vacuum your sand in any way or you need to clean that rock, you know, and you need to remove some extra water to clean the rock underwater, you can. So make sure you use this time to actually do a job that you need to do. Um, we're not going to show you how to do the water change because obviously we do all do it on big hoses, the way that we've always done it. Um, but we just thought we'd show you to do the big water change, you'll see the effects. And obviously when we have the reveal now in, what, a few days time, hopefully you'll see the effects on the cobbles of using a really good quality salt like the ATM hot salt and make sure that you use something really good quality and pure and it will just give you the results that you need. Greetings revolutionaries, so today is the last Sunday of the month so we're going to go on there out and purchase some livestock. This is obviously the last one we're going to have, it's pay weekend so we're going to go out, the store's absolutely rammed, we're going to pick out a few little gems, maybe one for each tank, um, something to really fill them up because uh, it's the last one we're going to do. So we'll make sure we go around the store, we'll show you a few bits and the reason we chose them, we'll chuck them in the tank, show you what we're going to do, where we place them and then we'll go from there and then hopefully you'll see as we start now gearing up to the end of the month because of the big water change and because of the other things we've done throughout the month that all the colours should be absolutely glowing now and look really really good ready for sort of show off day at the end of the month. Right so it's obviously Sunday so this is the day you can go out and purchase your livestock. Now what we're going to do is we've sort of neglect the tank free a little bit so we're going to give that a little bit of love we're just going to throw an extra coral in there. It's quite a difficult tank to actually sometimes add corals to because of the way the flow works so as you see that we've put some mushrooms on the on the shelf at the back. We're also gonna now what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick a really nice toadstool out of this bay. We've got loads in here to choose from. Um, we're gonna put that right in the front corner. It's sometimes where the sand can come up, so I know there's gonna be plenty of flow to keep them polyps out. So we're now gonna have a quick look down, gonna pick one out, and then I'm gonna try and pick one that I think will fit the gap really nice, and then we'll, we'll pop that in the tank. And you can see that one's gonna just develop. That is a much slower tank than the others to develop but it is on purpose because that's going to be one that we work on over three months and obviously you're only seeing a one month segment of it.
Greetings revolutionaries. So today we're going to have a little look at our lights. Um, normally this isn't something you might necessarily have to do, but it's well worth checking. As we've added a bit of livestock and we're going to add the growth throughout the month, we're going to check that all the coals are getting light. Uh, if any is sort of uh, not looking fantastic, we're going to turn that lights up or down, depending on what coals we have, or we'll move them up or down. It's just something to just consider every so often, especially if you purchase as much livestock we have throughout the month, um, just to make sure that you're absolutely where the coals need to be in terms of their lights. So we're going to have a look at the tanks, we're probably going to have to tweak one or two and we're going to show you how we did that and then we'll take you through all of that so you can do it at home and see if you need to do it as well. So it's now day 28, so one of the jobs that you should do is always give your lights a little check. So make sure you haven't moved them with the goosenecks or anything, so like this one's just come forward a little bit, like there, and we just check that the intensities haven't moved and the colours. We've put a little mark on ours so you can just see where they are, and then just give them a nice little wipe, make sure the fans are clean, make sure the lenses are clean underneath. So this is obviously the Kessel A80, same on this one, now just give it a little wipe over, just make sure there's no salt creep on the underside, you know the goose neck is exactly where you want it, and I'll go around and I'll do the other one and give that a little bit of a clean out as well. And that's it really, but it's the job that you want to make sure you do, it'll preserve the life of your lights by keeping that dust out. Obviously, also if there is any splashes or anything on the lenses, it'll really help with like making sure the light is actually what you think it is. So if you need to make any changes, we know that it is actually a true change and it's not that the lens just got dirty. So it's a job that you probably won't have to do that often, but if you just do it once a month, it took what, 30, 40 seconds to do these, and that's it. So tomorrow, I'll see you then as we start getting towards the end of the challenge. Revolutionaries, so today is obviously day 29. Um, today is the day where we were going to talk about some that we probably should have done earlier in the month, but we haven't got round to. So, we're going to say we're going to review our cleanup crew. It's something that we tend to put in all our tanks anyway. Anyone knows we have an absolutely huge selection of cleanup crew, like a lot of you already have conchers and grazing snails, and not just the usual suspects. So, what we're going to do today is maybe go around, have a look in the tank, see what cleanup crew we've already got in there. And if you need to add anything, we'll add one or two little special bits just to uh, show you the sort of options available that you can purchase in store. Well worth looking at your cleanup crew though, because they're going to save you loads of work. So we'll now have a look around, see what we've already got in there, and then we'll work out what we're going to need and then add it to the tank. Right, so what we're going to do today is review our cleanup crew. This is one of the jobs that you should probably do every so often. It's amazing how you just lose the odd little snail, but if you don't review it every so often, it can build up and build up and build up and all of a sudden you haven't got much cleanup crew left. As a general rule of thumb we say one snail per 20 litres for grazing and one snail per 20 litres for like Nasarius and bottom grazers. Obviously you can also add some shrimps in there and you can add some ornamental stuff such as your sort of anemone crabs, stuff that just add a bit of interest to your sexy shrimps, that sort of thing. So as we go through the tanks, obviously concept two, you sort of put the Nasarius in, it's also got the conch in, they're doing a fantastic job, you can see them in the series are actually in a little bit of the left over here. So in concept 3 we haven't actually got any clean up crew in there at the minute, so that's something we're going to review and we'll change. And you can see the sand is not looking great, so we'll just work on that in the next few depths. And then obviously concept 1, we've got a little bit of clean up crew, but as this tank is about to come to the end of its cycle, we've got a couple of conchers in here, we've got a couple of the series, a few greys and snails. So this is quite well stocked in terms of clean up crew. Um, it's something that worked, but this tank is about to come to the end of its life. It's had its three months now, so we'll start pulling this apart. So we're not going to add any more to that. So really, we just need to focus on tank three, which hasn't got any in, and it's sort of now it's a month and a half, and it was always designed to be a tank which you, where you hadn't necessarily get the tank a lot of love and how to bring it back round. So that's what we're going to focus on. We're going to try and get some conchers in there to get that over, a few nasarius and a few grazers now just to help pick any algae we might have. Greetings revolutionaries, so now we're obviously getting towards the end of the month now, so we're going to do our massive feed. Um, this is just so that all our coals are absolutely plump and as healthy and as big as they can be ready for tomorrow when we want to do all the photographs and end the series. So, we're going to go around, obviously we'll call Pro 1, and we're going to do absolutely loads of feeding, um, something that you can do yourselves, just make sure you can counteract that with maybe a water change or up in your revolution dose and whatever you need to do. 
So we'll do that as we go around, and you can see how much food we can, we're going to put into the tank, we're going to do some broadcasting, we're going to do some target feeding, we're just going to try and get everything as plump and as healthy as we can tonight, ready for tomorrow. So I'll see you around and we'll, we'll get over to the tanks and have a look at it. Right, so it's now day 30, it's the day before the reveal where we show you how far the tanks have come along. So what we're going to do is obviously we've done a massive feed, or we're going to do a massive feed. Got coral pro number one, we've already dosed that. We've also put in some a load of fish food, so all the fish are nice and fat and full today. Loads of mysis, stuff like that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go around and do loads of broadcast feeding with coral food four, because these are all soft tanks. So what we're going to do is we're going to almost triple dose each tank. So one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Now that is kind of an excessive amount, but because we want, we know we're going to do the photo shot tomorrow and end the challenge, we want to make them as full and as fat as we can. So, well, you can do this if you've got low, low, low nutrients or you just want to add that little extra boost. Obviously in the farm, we feed every day in certain tanks and some other tanks we feed you know, once a week. So it's all about you using your sort of reefer's nose and having that little bit of understanding about what's going on. That is an excessive amount of food for what we've put in, but it's done in a controlled way. So we're now going to let that go around, we're going to turn all the pumps on, just let them broadcast, let them all feed, so ready for tomorrow where we're going to clean them all up, we're going to take some really nice pictures, end the challenge and hopefully you've seen the results that you, we've had and we can take that forward going forward each month going forward. So it's now day 31, so we've completed the challenge. Uh, hopefully you've all been doing your two minutes, three minutes each day, and you've learned a few things. Um, if you've been following it, hopefully you're now seeing all the results, and you can incorporate all the things that you didn't know about into the chat, into your sort of weekly, monthly, three monthly maintenance regime. I know me and James have really enjoyed filming, that, haven't we? Yeah, and hopefully your tank is now looking better than it ever has before. Yeah, and that was always the aim, so hopefully we'll do some little series like that in the future and you can pick up a few more little tips. I know James is keen to do some more yeah. educational. Yeah. He also does his how-tos. So there's loads of information out there, loads of content. Make sure you check out the website and all of our social streams because we're constantly putting out new stuff out all the time. And make sure you subscribe, tick the bells, see first, whatever it is, just so you don't miss anything that we do. Yeah, absolutely. All I've ever wanted is for Salty Revolution to be the best ever. And we're so close. Join the revolution.